Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, obviously, I'm very pleased to be here. I see a lot of good friends out there. You all look younger than you did the last time I saw you. <laughs> I congratulate you. And I, as some of you know, I always say that I would have retired in accordance with the rules and not been seen again. I had in mind, you know, a 65-foot uh, yawl with a rather attractive 18-year-old crew aboard. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, when I got there, I found out I had the numbers reversed. <laughs> And it was an 18-foot dinghy with a 65-year-old crew. <laughs> so that's why I'm back here working. Uh, you know, my, uh, my assignment today was to compare the two presidential candidates and their economic programs. And I made a little test, and I went around and asked a lot of people, what do you think of either McCain or Obama's economic program. And mostly the answer was, what is it? it? Neither candidate, I think, has defined an economic program in a way that's very memorable. But more important, neither uh, candidate has come up with an economic program to deal what, with what has happened in the last month. We have gone clearly into the worst financial panic that we have had since the Great Depression. Some ways it's worse because it's much more complicated. And uh, our financial system and most of the rest of the world uh, now has a non-functioning frozen financial uh, infrastructure. Uh, none of you have ever lived through anything like that, I don't believe. Uh, I can vaguely remember it when I was growing up in the Great Depression. And for the first time, that kind of a financial disturbance has begun to hit the real economy, and I, in my view, is going to hit it very hard. And the longer we are in this state, the worse it's going to be. So we're facing some challenging times. Uh, I wish that the presidential candidates had more experience in the real world of the private sector. Unfortunately, we have two candidates who are highly qualified, but neither of them have ever been in business nor do they have any experience that can help guide them in terms of our problems with the private sector. So I am would put out first when you're deciding which candidate you want to vote for, you better look hard at who's advising them because one of them is a fighter pilot and the other is a community organizer both very reputable careers, but not particularly useful in preparing them for the kind of situation that they're going to come into, which is clearly going to be the challenge of the century. And uh, I'd like to start by uh, naming a few of the things that took place that I think caused us to be where we are today. Because if we're going to try to fix it, we ought to have some, some understanding of how we got here. And uh, this is my theory. You certainly can disagree with it. And it may not be right, but at least it's one person's observation on some of the things that got us where we are today and uh, in terms of specific actions that ended up with this perfect storm that has put the financial system 
in the place it is today. Uh, as you remember, we had a great prosperity headed by a housing boom. And the housing boom was essentially fueled by a new form of, of mortgage, subprime mortgages, mortgages for people with less than perfect credit. And uh, the system has always been adjusting to try to meet the needs within, within uh, the capabilities of the people who want homes. So the subprime mortgage market grew in a way that is almost impossible to believe. There were almost two million subprime mortgages written in a year and a half. That means somebody had to finance a couple million homes almost of subprime mortgages. So uh, why did anybody put their money in this? Why would anybody, knowing that these people, subprime means that they are not prime. Uh, well, the genesis of that goes back to something called securitization and something called tranched, credit rated securitization. Now that was invented by one of uh, the people who uh, were operating in the RTC and namely it was invented by me and our group. So you can start with saying that the vehicle that was used to market the subprime mortgages was this kind of securitization. And what is tranche credit rated securitization? Well, I, I, I hope you all know, but I would guess that there are a few that may not know. So what it simply means is you take a bunch of mortgages, you put them into a trust, and then you divide the trust up into sections, and you say the first section, all the mortgages will support payment of interest on the first section. And then after they're paid, you go to the second, then the third, and then there's a residual piece. That is the way that these mortgages, subprime mortgages, were put together and then these pieces were sold all over the world. I remember when we invented this, Alan Greenspan said, well, this is a great new innovation because we are spreading the risk all over the world, which of course is what we did and for, for which at this point the world is, to say the least, blaming the whole financial crisis we're in on us. And the problem was that subprime mortgages were not a known quantity. The credit raters really didn't know how to rate them because they didn't have any history of this. So they used other mortgages. The problem was that when you added up all the pieces, it came to a higher value than the underlying assets. In other words, the packaging made the product. And of course, when reality sets in and the mortgages start uh, being foreclosed because these people's credit was not good enough to, to handle the houses that were being sold to them, uh, we had the start of the problem we, have, we had now. So one, the credit rating agencies and I guess you can blame me or blame those of us who did the RTC, but there was a vital difference. We retained that last piece. So we had an interest in seeing that this all worked because after all, we were the last one on the ladder. 